previously on the Word of God through Jesus Christ telecast. A lot of ministers won't use the prophet and prophetess of the house. Why? Because they know the mess that that minister and that ministry got going on. That's right. So what they do is they'll call somebody that's going to tell them what they want to hear. They'll call their nephew or their family or their best friend or the one they do the dirt with or the one they sin with. In some cases, the one they sleep with. And they say to them, come and speak and have a speaking engagement. Here's what y'all sheep don't know. There's ministers that have fundraisers and call it a speaking engagement because they're exchanging money. I'll come to your ministry and put 500 in. You come to mine and put 500 in. Neither one of them are going to the house of God because God is not in that mess. He's not in that. And then when they come with contracts, this is what I want to get paid. So now you want to get paid for ministry. Then they do the free will offering. I got to tell you, I got to tell you the truth. When they come with the contract and they get paid, that's earned income and they got to pay taxes on that. But when they say, all right, I'm going to collect also a free will offering, that is a donation and they don't have to even report that to the IRS. So you've been had. You've been took, hood away. You, right? You've been bamboozled. <laughs> You've been led astray. You've been run amok. Been this is what's going on in these places of worship, and that's why God allowed that coronavirus spirit to be launched out by Satan to come and to close the places that y'all call. The place of worship. Here's what God let me say. I was listening because I had left my spirit, but God just brought it back. Praise the Lord. Those of you prophets and prophetesses that go to a lot of the ministries, you're really only there on assignment anyway. Whoa. You're, Whoa. you're not there to join. That's right. You're not there to become a member. You're already a member of the body of Christ. The body of Christ. <laughs> when God called you into ministry, he gave you a work. So whenever he want to use a prophet or a prophetess, he's calling on you. So when he send you to ministries and you be thinking, oh, I got to leave this ministry and go to that one. I need to find a church. You talk just like they do. The church is not a building. That's right. We are the church. We are. What That's you right. need to be saying is, Lord, where are you sending me at now? Right. And then find out why. Because you're going on assignment. Now those broken down ministers, when they see you come in, they go, wow, look at that fire and that anointing. Oh, brother and sister, God got you and he got a calling for you. Oh, we glad you're here. We love you. And then after the hype fades away, they have you sit down. Shut up. Now you can't, you can't speak. Sit, sit down. You, you have your time. You know, God, God moves in seasons you'll have your time let's not get ahead of god oh don't nobody be going around prophesying telling nobody does say it the lord tell it to me first and being that i am the mouthpiece here i'll tell if it's god or not don't fall for that mess don't fall for it it's a trick it's crazy. because they know god is with you Another word of God through Jesus Christ, street and outreach ministry, raw and uncut productions.
Uh, perfect time for the word. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the word. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. The Lord has assigned me as apostle, teacher, and prophet of the Word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Outreach Ministry. Thank you for joining the ministry for this broadcast that God is doing today. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't even know if he's going to have friends with me or not. I don't know, but we're going to find out. You can reach the ministry at 475 300 24 hours. The ministry's website is also on the screen, so that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the Cash App link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you, and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you, and all that you are in my life, for all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how was my life you. As long as I have Jesus, I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. Now I'd like to ask you to jump backwards to chapter 4, and we're going to read verses 1 through 16 of 2 Corinthians. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, that's Satan, has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, 
but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. The thought that God gave me for this lesson is if you leave this world, and lift Praise up your eyes in hell, then it's your own fault. That goes for all of us. The title is how long is it going to take for you to submit to God? How long is it going to take for you to submit to God? Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us for our sins and yes, shortcomings Lord. and faults and wrongs. Please, Lord, fill me with the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Give me a spiritual understanding of your word. Tell me what to say, and it shall be said. Minister to all of your children you have watching. Minister to us as well, in Jesus' name. Don't leave us out. We need to get fed too. So just have mercy on us and minister this word, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Again, the thought is if you leave this world and lift up your eyes in hell, then it's your own fault that goes for all of us. And the title, once again, is how long is it going to take for you to submit to God? And as we know in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, no, chapter 5, verse 18, Paul mentioned that the Lord, who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, he's given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And as the Lord told Brother Paul to write in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Excuse me. Verse 4 says, in whom the God of this world, who you must understand is Satan, the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Let me paraphrase that and put it in layman's terms. The devil has blinded the minds of those that don't understand the gospel, those that are lost. To them, the gospel is hid because they don't understand the importance of accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So he has blinded their minds because he's a God of this world and ever Amen. since he stole it from Adam, Amen. he's able to do this. He's able Amen. to trick man, to deceive man. He's able to knock man off their post when they try to find God or after they have found God. And the gospel to them is hid because they're lost. They're lost. 
the devil has blinded their minds. Because if he didn't, then the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, who is God, would shine unto them. The ministry of reconciliation. The word ministry is from the Greek word diakonia. And it's used 34 times in the New Testament. And what it means is attendance as a servant, etc. Figuratively, this word means elimocenary, which is defined as charitable, benevolent, gratuitous, aid. It also means aid, ministry does. It means official service. If you're taking notes, put official in parentheses. And also, the diaconia is a service, especially of the Christian teacher, or technically of the diaconate, which is translated into the English word deacon. Ministry also means office, relief, services. The word reconciliation is from the Greek word katalage, or some pronounce it katalage, and is used four times in the New Testament, and it means exchange. Figuratively, it means adjustment. In other words, restoration to, again, parentheses, the divine, in parentheses, favor. It also means atonement, one time. Reconciliation, two times. Talking about the word catalegue, two times it means reconciliation, one time it means atonement, and one time it means reconciling. This word means an adjustment of a difference reconciliation restoration to favor especially the restoration of the favor of God to sinners that repent and put their trust in the expiatory which means purifying propitiatory or propitiatory which means sacrificing That's, that's what people put their trust in, the purifying and the sacrificing death of Jesus Christ. Man changes and is reconciled, but God does not change. You heard the brother apostle. <laughs> you heard your brother apostle minister about prophets who build their ministry on a sign. They're not the only ones that do that. Bishops do it too. Some apostles do it too. Some evangelists do it too. Some teachers do it too. There are ministers who build their ministry on a sign mm -hmm. Because they want to seem great. They want to take the glory from God. So that they can seem great. And, and that's not good. Because that can cause you to get in trouble. That can cause you to get in trouble. And we don't want to get in trouble. We don't want to get in trouble. We don't want to disobey God. We don't want to anger God. We don't want to make God upset. We don't want to do that. It's very important to not 
try to take God's glory. In the book of Numbers, chapter 20, verse 1 says, Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin in the first month, and the people abode in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there, and there was no water for the congregation. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people chode or murmured with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord? And why have ye brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness, that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore have ye made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us unto this evil place. It is no place of seed or of figs or of vines or of pomegranates. Neither is there any water to drink. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. That was that big tent they used to put up in the wilderness everywhere they stopped. And they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. Remember, in the beginning of your walk with God, those that walk with God, you remember when the Lord used to come to your every beck and call. Every time you used to call on him, how the Lord used to just appear. How things would be rough and you would cry out to God and ask him to help you and bless you and destroy your enemies and, and, and just handle everything that you're going through. And God used to come like that. But as you grew, once you got to a different level in the Lord, once you began to know him, once you really, really learned him, then he didn't always come so fast. Right here, the people in the wilderness complain. They always complain. Everyone complains about trials instead of us going through them. There's ways that you go through trials, you know. There's ways. There's things that you have to do. Some trials you have to fast through. Some trials you can just walk through. Some trials you pray through. Some trials you just be quiet through. There are different ways to go through every trial. These people chose to complain. Now here's, here's a problem because it was the devil that caused them to complain because the devil wants us to, to appear to be ungrateful to God for how God bless us. There's people that are hungry and God bless them with food. They don't even say their grace. There's people that God wake up every morning in their right mind. They don't even say, Lord, thank you for waking me up. When there's people dying in their sleep. There's people that God have blessed with jobs and homes and marriages. And some people don't appreciate these things because they take advantage of them. Israel saw God do many miracles. I mean, it's easy for us to say this and we could, we could very well be wrong because we're saying it on this side of scripture and not on their side. And that is when the Lord opened up the Red Sea and we walked through it on dry ground, for me, that would have been enough. But that's what I say. It don't mean that that's true because if I was there, I might have been in a bad situation just like them. We all might have. There's people that say, well, if I was one of the apostles or one of the disciples or if I was around in Jesus' day and I walked with him, then I would have I would have been the most faithful servant he had. Nah, maybe not. Maybe not. You can't say that. These people complained after they saw God do so much. 
And then they went against the prophet and the priest. The priest is the equivalent to the pastor. So Moses being the prophet that was leading God's people and the pastor being at his side that was supposed to help him by watching over the sheep while the prophet spent time with God. Someone had to go to God on behalf of the people and then come back to the people on behalf of God and that is the prophet. See, the, that's why the pastor does not instruct the prophet because the pastor's responsibility is to watch over sheep. Brother, minister, brother, pastor, brother, bishop, your responsibility is to watch over the sheep. Your responsibility is to be used by God to reconcile the sheep to God through Jesus Christ. You should be pointing them to Jesus Christ. You should be feeding them the word of God. You should get off of that pedestal and put God up there and point the people to him. And if there's a prophet that's there in the ministry, that prophet is supposed to be spending time, and the prophet is, in prayer, fasting, worship to God. To be able to help the people to come in the presence of God. That's the prophet's responsibility. One thing Moses did here that was good and he took the pastor with him. Verse 6, And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. The tabernacle was consecrated. It was a place in which the Holy Ghost appeared often. A lot of ministries today, the majority of them, the Lord is not there. Where the Lord is, sin cannot reside. Sin cannot be. If you're in the ministry and there's a whole bunch of sin going on there and you might be wondering why are my prayers not being answered? Part of the reason is because when there's sin in the camp, it disrupts the movement of God. But when the place is consecrated unto the Lord, when the place is sanctified unto the Lord. Even in your home, if you dedicate a room to God and consecrate that room to God, if God gives you a room and you show him you appreciate it and you keep it clean and you honor that room and you sanctify that room and you spend time with God in that room, the Lord's presence will always be there. All you have to do every time you're in the jail, go to that secret Spot. They went to the tabernacle and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. Sometimes you don't need the Lord to just come. Sometimes his glory, his greatness can just appear and that would be enough. Because where his greatness is, his power is going to be. The Lord spoke to Moses, the prophet, which goes to show that when the Lord has a prophet and a bishop, which is the same thing as pastor, when the Lord have a prophet and a pastor or a bishop together, the bishop got to understand when God send the prophet in your midst, there's a spot that you have to step mm -hmm. off of. You have to sit down. You have to step back. And let God minister to the prophet because the prophet was sent there. Like the apostle said, when God sends a prophet and a prophetess to a ministry, it is an assignment. They are on assignment. Amen, brother? They are on assignment. They're not there to join the congregation. They're not there to join the ministry. Because if they're an active prophet and prophetess, then that means God already gave them a work to do. Sure, we all still study and train, but we all study and train where the Lord have us at, 
when he's called us in ministry. When people ask me, Brother Apostle, do you go fellowship or sit under somebody and every man that's by himself is not of God and that's not the will of the Lord? Well, you speak for yourself because we're still living in Bible days. And when God called Ezekiel, he was accountable to who? God. When he called Jeremiah, he was accountable to who? God. When the disciples who became apostles were walking with Jesus Christ, they were accountable to who? God. They asked Jesus, why is it your disciples don't fast? He said, they don't need to because they're with me. I'm here. Now, when I leave, they'll have to fast. Why? Because once he go back to heaven, of course, his spirit, the Holy Ghost, who is God, he would be here, but he would lead them in worship and prayer to God. When you are in ministry, you are accountable to God. Man cannot carry you from level to level, from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Man can't do that. Man cannot fill you with the Holy Ghost and baptize you in fire. Man cannot even teach you how to speak in unlearned tongues because those tongues are unlearned. It is important that you develop a relationship with God. When you develop a relationship with God, it don't take so much effort to reach him. It don't take so much effort to reach him when you develop a relationship with him. Now, if you don't have a relationship with God, you might have to do all kinds of things to reach him. The Lord spoke to Moses and here's what he told the prophet. Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod, check, from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. Check. And he said unto them. Now here's where he went off because God says speak to the rock. He didn't say speak to the people. But he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. Now scripture says in verse 12 of Numbers chapter 20, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, now I could just see in the spirit, imagine God doing this. Has God ever did this to you? Has God ever, ever, ever did this to you? Has he ever? He's done it to me. There's been times that I have went outside of the perimeter and the Lord said, He's done that to you, right? He has had to. When you walk with God, he even corrects you in your error when you're wrong. Now, it's funny. Some might wonder, well, if he committed a sin, then why did water come from the rock? Well, water came from the rock. Because God taught him how to do that before. He taught Moses how to bring water from the rock. The reason that water came from the rock is because 
God taught Moses how to make water come from the rock by striking it. Now, the Lord taught me how to pray against rain. So that's something for me that's very easy to do because the Lord taught me how to do it. So whenever I'm out in the field doing street and outreach ministry, we don't, I don't, that's me too. That is me. I'm sure y'all know by now, that's me. I don't use an umbrella. I don't even own one. Because when the Lord got me out doing street and outreach ministry, he don't want me to get wet, especially after he done dressed me and everything. So the Lord taught me how to pray against rain. Amen? How to pray against rain. So that way it stops. People that know me are aware of that. People that know me are very aware of that. So when Moses struck this rock, water came out because he did this before. But here's the difference. Even though God might teach you how to do this, there's times that, again, God is not going to use you to do the same thing the same way. He's going to use you a different way to get the miracle out of the same situation. Don't be so stuck and stayed in one move of God. Because God has a plethora of methods. There's things God will do that you couldn't even fathom. Again, when you get to be stronger in the Lord and more mature, he's not going to come every time like that. There's some time it's going to take a while. There's some time you're going to be saying, Lord, are you hearing me? Lord, where you at? Lord, I'm praying and fasting and crying. Why are you not answering me? It's not that he don't hear you. The book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 24, one of my favorite scriptures, <laughs> and also one of my most challenging ones. 65, verse 24, God said, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer true on that he said and it, this is Isaiah 65 24 and it shall come to pass that before they call I will answer and while they are yet speaking I will hear <laughs> why well he'll hear because while we're in the middle of our trial while we're in the midst of all this, while we're going through all of this, while we're struggling and walking and, and going through and waiting and crying and fasting and praying, sometimes we need to talk to somebody because the trial can get hard. When you're going through stuff because of people, the trial can get hard. So you need somebody to talk to. And it's hard to talk to the average person because if they weren't there to hear God tell you anything, then they may very well challenge it. Well, you know, I don't believe God would do it that way. And I don't think that God would say this. And I don't feel that God would say that. Now, when you're a prophet, you know that there's, well, when you're a seasoned prophet, you know there's certain words that should not be in your vocabulary. One of them is, I think. That should not be in your vocabulary because we prophets are not led by thought. Another word that shouldn't be used in your vocabulary is, I feel. I'm feeling that God is, well, I feel like God wants to, or I feel like God, no, because God, your feelings are not what God uses to minister to you, because your feelings can be deceptive. Then you have the ones that say, well, to me, to me, this means that, to me, uh, God would do this, to me, you know. Or then you got those people that always tell you, 
how God is always so with them, but their walk and their language and their level of anointing and, I'm going to say, intelligence don't always fit that. There are people, God could use you to minister to them, and they'll say, I know. That spirit is a terrible spirit because that spirit will cause God to be quiet. Not only will that spirit cause God to be quiet, but the Holy Ghost said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, here's what he said. Chapter 14, uh, he said in verse 12, should be 14, 14 and 14, but it's not, I'm trying to, thank God, yet in church, brother, but Lord, let me go back, he that speaketh in the unknown to likewise, and say you in trouble again, therefore speaketh, even so forth, wherefore let him speak in the unknown tongue, let him be interpret, if a man speaketh, there it is right there, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 29, let the let the prophets speak two or three and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. Verse 32 says, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. The Lord can tell you to be quiet when people got the I know spirit. If God tells you something and somebody I know, then it, the Holy Ghost can silence you and that anointing will be silent as well. The word won't come out. And that's how it goes. It's very important to understand the anointing. Very important. When Moses struck that rock and God said, come here. Verse 12, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron. Here's what God said. Because ye believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, Ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. That was exclusion. The Lord told Moses, you blew it. You won't go into the promised land. He told Moses that. Now, it's important to also understand when God called Moses in the book of Exodus, chapter 3, when Moses went and investigated that burning bush. In chapter 3, when God called him, here's what God said. Verse 4, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flung with milk and honey, Unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh. 
that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. He didn't say, and bring them into the promised land. That wasn't for him to do. But he said, to bring my people out of bondage. I thank God for the fivefold ministry. Because God uses all five gifts, gifts differently. They're not all used the same. It is sin, it's wrong for an evangelist to tell a prophet, you don't praise God enough. It's wrong for a prophet and a prophetess to tell an evangelist, you don't worship God. It is wrong for a pastor to tell an apostle how to handle sheep. It is wrong for the apostle to tell the pastor. What is it wrong for the apostle to tell the pastor? Because apostles do cultivate the gift of the pastoral office. Thank you, Lord. It's wrong for the apostle to tell the pastor, don't be compassionate. Yeah. It is wrong for anyone to tell the teacher, don't be dogmatic. Don't be so dry. Why is it you always got to teach women that are married to apostles and married to teachers? Some of them say that. I know one precious sister who said to me one time, why you talk to me like I'm your pupil? And I, I said, you're not my pupil. No. But see, when a man is a teacher of the gospel, what do you expect him to do? If he was drinking, carousing, running the street, getting high, smoking weed, cigarettes, or crack, or sniffing dope, or whatever, is that what you would rather he do? The man of God and the woman of God is going to be committed to God. Yet, yeah, the fivefold ministry, all five of the gifts do different things. But when they are teamed together, then they make up the fivefold ministry, which every ministry, every service, every bit of spiritual aid should operate with the fivefold ministry involved. Because if not, the ministry becomes lopsided. Like the Lord used the apostle to say, is wrong to build your ministry on a gift. Because then you'll do like Moses. When Moses smote the rock twice, but before that he said, here now ye rebels must we fetch you water. He took God's glory. And when he took God's glory, he lost his place. He lost going into the promised land. Now, now that's a sermon all on its own. Because the deep thing about that being used by God to lead people knowing you're not going into the promised land. That's, that's forfeiting. There's a, a teaching on that that would be a blessing to hear, the doctrine of forfeiting. Esau sold his birthright for something to eat. He forfeited. Then he sought it back with tears. There are people in covenants, whether it's marriage, business, relationship with their children, whatever the case may be, to where you have forfeited that covenant because you didn't do something God's way. I hate to say this. Even children, you can betray a parent because you didn't do it God's way. You can lose the respect of your children because you didn't do it God's way. You can lose your job because you didn't do it God's way. 
You can lose stuff because you don't do it God's way. It is very, very important to understand this. Because imagine where Adam and Eve had everything. And then because of being disobedient to God, they got kicked out of heaven, out of the garden. Not heaven, but the garden. Because the garden was here in the earth realm. They got kicked out of the garden. Lucifer got kicked out of heaven. The third of the angels that were given unto him, they lost their place that they were made in, their first estate. The Lord don't want us to forfeit. He wants to bless us. He wants to minister to us. Let him minister to you. Glorify him by what you do. Lastly, if you look back in the book of Exodus again, chapter 3, Exodus chapter 3. See the anointing will wear you down. Look at that. The anointing will wear you down. And he will, the Holy Ghost will cause you to rest. He will also cause you to wake up. Father, I need you to bless me. Sometimes you got to pray for yourself. I need you to bless me, Lord. Please forgive me for all my sins and shortcomings and my faults and my wrongs. I need you to anoint me. I need you to empower me. I need you to stir up the gift that is in thy servant. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please, Father. Thou hast called me. Make me usable and use me. Thank you for how you use me. And I ask, Lord, that you hear all my prayer. The things that you've been blessing me to fast for, I ask, Father, that you answer those prayers. Yes, stir me up in the name of Jesus because I need you. I need you, Lord. Can't do nothing without you. Can't do anything without you. Please, Father, have mercy. Have mercy. The Lord told Moses in Exodus 3, in verse 8, the Lord said, And I have come down and delivered them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land, and a large, unto a land flung with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. God was telling Moses where I'm going to bring you. There might be, there are people there, but I'm going to remove them. I'm living in a place where I got neighbors that are unsaved. They're drunks. They're, they're, they're drug addicts. Some of them even try to sell a drug or two. I, I look and, 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 it's something how people that don't even really like each other will get together and they will they will come against you thinking that they have the upper hand. Now again, 
in the natural, here I am a master of Kung Fu, of over 12 different animal styles. Somebody told me before I was very dangerous. But I noticed something. When you come in the Lord, you have to be very docile. You cannot, you cannot be the way you were when you were in the world. Because the Lord says, vengeance is mine. So you can't avenge yourself. You have to depend on the Lord. And sometimes you got to pray your way through some serious stuff. God said he would drive out these other nations from the land that he had for his people. In Exodus 33, verse 1, and the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence, thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed will I give it. And I will send an angel before thee. And I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, and the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. God said that he would drive them out. He'll drive them out. Again, I hope that this has been a great blessing to you. What the Lord used apostle to do and me the prophet. What he used me to do. Again, don't get caught up in the theatrics. But the Lord blessed me to be able to give him an excellent work, an excellent offering, which is my service unto the Lord for his glory. Come on, brother, let's pray. We got to close out. All right. You ready? Right. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, brother, bow your head. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you to forgive us for our sins and shortcomings and faults and wrongs. Please keep us before you. Anoint us, minister to us. Let us have a blessed day. Let us get some rest. And then to get up and work for you another day. Thank you, Lord, for everything. We love you, Lord. Please hear our prayers. Please honor the prayers that are going for us. Please, Father. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Please, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for this yes, word, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for how you move, Lord. Yes, Thank Lord. you for how you use us. Thank you, Lord. All of your children. The way you thank use all you. of us to stand before you, Lord. Yes, Lord. The way you use us to minister, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you glory, Lord. We give you yes, the praise. Lord. We honor you, Father. We glorify you. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Replenish Lord, us, Lord. Yes, Lord. We strengthen us, Lord. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Anoint us. Forgive oh, us for hallelujah. all of our sins and our shortcomings and our faults and our wrongs. Forgive all of the people in the prayer box, all those that are watching the TV. Please, show. Father. Please forgive us. In Jesus. Please, Lord. Forgive us all, Lord. We rebuke the devil. Yes. We plead the blood against him. Yes, Lord. 
to bind him, Lord, in yes. the earth realm. Yes. And we've already bound in him. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yes, Lord. We command him to go back to the pit of yes. hell for where he Hallelujah. Came. We render him powerless. Yes, Lord. We lose all our stuff from him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory. Have mercy. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Everything. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Holy angel, Lord. Yes, Lord. Holy Lord. dispense angels. Anointed angels. And into the earth now. Yes, Send Lord. them to see about this prayer request, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Thank Lord. you, Father. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Lord. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus. Name. Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. 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 Yes. Good show, brother. Good show. So what you what you think? Uh, Bless you. I tell you, that's that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care <laughs> till the next time. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. For all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus. I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have food for my table. I'm glad, I'm glad I know. Someone.